In this video, we are going to have a look at the Lauer 100mm f2.8 2x Ultra Macro Lens. Kia good morning everyone, Richard Wong here. Every time the guys from Venus Optics contact me, um, I am pretty excited because normally that means they have some new lens that they are going to announce soon. Every time they bring out a lens, normally there is something that is quite unique, quite different that um, other people haven't done before. So this time they have sent me their Lauer 100mm uh, F2.8 Ultra Macro 2x uh, Apple CA Dreamer lens. What a long lens. Um, the reason why it is such a long lens because there is quite a few things that is quite unique with this lens. So first thing, this is a macro lens and not just the typical uh, one times macro lens, this is a two times macro lens. And uh, unlike the last ultra macro lens that I reviewed, um, that was last year, I think there was a lower 25mm 2.5 to 5 times ultra macro lens, that lens couldn't focus to infinity, so that one is a purely macro lens. While this lens, you can actually focus to infinity as well. So you can use this lens as a, just like a normal lens, a normal short telefocal lens. Um, if you want to take some portrait photo or landscape photo, anything, um, this lens can do the job as well. And I also mentioned the word APO. Uh, if you don't know what it is, uh, it's APO, and it stands for apochromatic. So what it means is, um, if a manufacturer have created a lens that they believe it has no chromatic aberration or very little amount of chromatic aberration, then um, quite often they will put the APO name in part, as part of their name. We are definitely going to have a look at whether the lens has very little amount of chromatic aberration or not during the image quality tests. 100mm macro is a very common and popular macro lens because the slightly longer focal length make it very suitable for shooting a wide range of macro photos. Um, because if you use a short one, that will be quite difficult if you want to take some um, inset macro photos because you will get too close to it. When you have a 100mm lens, then you can stay a little bit further away, which make it uh, a little bit easier when you are taking macro photo of the insets or anything that will move. If you never have a macro lens before, let me tell you one thing is um, when you are taking macro photos, your depth of field would be very, very shallow. So this is a sample photo that I want to show you that I shot at the 2 times medication at the uh, maximum aperture f2.8. Um, as you can see, the depth of field is very, very shallow. It's only around one millimeter or so. So when you are taking macro photos, normally you would stop down the lens quite a bit. Um, F11 or F16 or to the minimum aperture, that's normally how you would do when you are taking macro photos. And what that means is you also need a lot of light. If you are taking photo on a bright sunny day under the bright sun night, then you probably is fine. You just bump up the ISO a little bit. Otherwise, if you are taking macro photos uh, indoor or on a cloudy day, you'll probably need some camera fresh or some kind of lighting to light up the scene quite a bit so that you can take the photo uh, at the small aperture and still be able to maintain the shutter speed so it doesn't introduce any blur because of the camera shake. Even as a relatively new company, Lauer seems to have already established their styling for their lens design. Um, if you look at it, it will be quite easy to recognize that this is a Lauer lens, you know, with the blue ring at the top and all the fonts and style and the finish all look very Lauer-ish. Um, the paint on the lens, I really love it. It just feels very smooth, very nice, very high quality. At the top of the lens, you have the focus ring. It is actually a very large focus ring because it also includes the bit with the, the scale here that tell you um, where what is your focus distance and also the magnification. Uh, the focus ring itself is very, very smooth and there's a hard stop at the end. Um, the travel is just over 90 degrees, so around 100 degrees or so. I feel uh, when I'm taking photo, I feel the travel, the amount of travel is probably just about right. 
At the bottom of the lens, you have the aperture ring, which go from f2.8 all the way to f22. So the aperture ring has clicked. I love it. And uh, each click is one stop. So that is very good when you are taking photo without uh, having to look at the aperture ring. The lens doesn't have any electronic contacts. So when you mount it onto the body, um, from the body, you cannot really know what aperture um, you have selected. Also, there's no EXIF data recorded when you took the photo when i first received the lens um the lens was a bit like this not sure if you can see it um the front element is actually just like halfway like around here which looks a bit strange when i first got the lens i was thinking oh is there a large lens hook at the front but it's not a lens hook because when you change the focus from infinity which is when it was at the rearmost position to two times magnification you will see the front element starting to push forward i don't have any problem with that but that gives me a little bit of concern because when you uh, move the front element back here the inside of the lens here uh, there is a bit of uh, grease or some lubricant here to help make the focusing um, very smooth but that means the area here is completely exposed to attract dirt or dust so I'm a bit worried about after you use the lens for quite a while especially if you use it outdoor quite a bit would it end up attracting and collecting a lot of dust and dirt from the side of the barrel to inside the lens apart from that I am very impressed by the build quality and design of the lens it looks very beautiful and feel very solid oh another thing I want to talk about is um, when I saw the lens cap I noticed there is a little hole here. I presume this is for you to attach a, a string or something to it so that you won't lose the lens cap. So this is a very little design, but I'm very happy to see that because it means the company is paying a lot of attention to all the smaller details. The lens is available for three different lens mount, the Nikon F, the Canon EF, and also the Sony E or FE lens mount. And the one I'm using right now, as you can see, is for the Nikon F mount. Now, one very nice thing um, that Lawa did for the Nikon version is that they have done the aperture coupling mechanism. This is something that um, a lot of lenses from the Chinese manufacturer they don't have and what that means is when you are shooting at um, as a smaller aperture than the right open one if you don't have the aperture coupling then the aperture would become smaller and smaller as you are adjusting the aperture on the aperture ring this is a big problem for macro lens because as I mentioned at the beginning when you are taking macro photos a lot of time you'll be shooting at quite a small aperture so that it gives you enough depth of field. That means the optical viewfinder on your DSR will become very dim that makes it very hard for you to see exactly what you are shooting. I'm definitely very happy to see Lawa has implemented this feature for the Nikon F version. Before we go and talk about the image quality, I want to quickly show you uh, what makes this lower 2x ultra macro lens, how is it different from the typical 100mm macro lens available on the market right now. So um, I have this one, this is a $1 coin, this is a New Zealand $1 coin, and um, let me take a photo using uh, the lens at the one times magnification. So this is what a normal 100mm macro lens would give you when you are taking photo at the maximum magnification and next i'm going to take another photo but this time at the two times magnification you can see there is quite a bit of difference between the photo i shot at one times and two times magnification and this is exactly what makes this lower two times ultra macro lens special Okay, finish about the build quality and the body design and let's move on and talk about the image quality. As usual, we start with the image sharpness first and the lens, this lens is a super sharp lens. Even at the maximum aperture f2.8, uh, look at the center, it's already very sharp and then even if you move on to the corner, it's still very sharp. So um, definitely a very sharp lens. 
Bokeh is very important for a macro lens because um, when you are shooting at a very close distance, the object in the background will be easily out of focus and turn into the pretty looking 4K balls. And with this lower 100mm ultra macro lens, the bokeh is rendered very nicely, very beautifully, um, also very round as well. If you stop down the lens a bit, um, the bokeh does turn into polygon shape because for the Nikon version, there are only seven braids on the lens. And as I mentioned at the beginning, this is a APO lens or APO lens, and that means the chromatic aberration should be very, very well controlled. So I did some quick tests, and uh, this is the result from the lower lens. As you can see, both the out of focus foreground and the background area. Um, it's all completely black. If you compare it to the other photo that I shot with another macro lens, you can see that there is a little bit of color tint at the foreground and the background out of focus area. So this is what an Apple lens is about. Um, the in focus area, the out of focus area, both the foreground and background, there is very minimal amount of chromatic aberration. There is a little bit of distortion when I look at my brick wall sample photo. The amount of distortion is not huge, but I do expect a little bit less for a 100mm macro lens. At the maximum aperture of f2.8, you can notice quite a bit of vignetting. And if you stop down to f4, it improved a little bit, but you can still see it. Only when you stop down to f5.6, then the vignetting is virtually invisible. While the vignetting is a little bit more than I expected, this is actually not a problem at all because for a macro lens, a lot of time you'll be shooting at uh, aperture much smaller than f5.6. If you shoot directly into a strong light source, be prepared to see a bit of lens flare. It's nowhere as bad as the Makey 15mm lens that I revealed recently, but if you want to minimize lens flare, you may have to stop down the lens a little bit. In my lower 25mm ultra macro lens review, I think I mentioned that I won't recommend that lens to people who are just about to start um, doing micro photography. Uh, the reason is because that lens can only focus uh, between 2.5 to 5 times. It cannot be used as a normal lens to do normal shooting or it can't even do a one-time magnification. So I feel that was probably a little bit too much for people that hasn't done any macro photography before. But this time with this lower 100mm ultra macro lens, I would say I would recommend it to pretty much anyone, to people who have never done macro before or people who already have macro lens but just want to do uh, something a little bit higher magnification. I think this lens is suitable for a wide range of photographers. The reason is pretty simple because the lens can focus to infinity so you can just use it as a normal short telephoto lens for uh, a bit of portrait or um, anything landscape or anything you want and then you can start doing macro as well you have the normal one-time magnification which is suitable for a lot of macro photography and then you can go more crazy to do the two times magnification which require a little bit more of skills and technique because it's harder to make sure the photo is sharp and in focus but you have the lens that can do everything so you can slowly migrate from one time to two times if you are a beginner And overall, I'm just pretty happy with everything about the lens. The build quality is very good. Um, the image quality is also very good. And also the price is very affordable and reasonable as well. I believe the price will be uh, 450 US dollar, which is pretty much um, half the price of most other uh, 100mm macro lens from the first party manufacturers. Compared to those lens at double the price, um, those lens will have autofocus and those lens will have electronic contacts. That means you can get the EXIF data and also you can change the aperture from the camera body and see what aperture you are setting. But those things are not really that important for macro photography. Not a lot of people would use autofocus when you are shooting macro photos, so this is not a big disadvantage. On the other hand, the lower can give you up to two times magnification. And when it comes to the image quality, I believe it is just as good, if not better than some of the first party macro lens as well. 
So at half the price of the other first party macro lenses, I have a feeling that this lower 100mm ultra macro lens will probably be a very popular lens among the macro photographers. So what do you think about this 100mm ultra macro lens from Lawa? Share with me your thoughts in the comment fields below. And thank you much for watching this video and hopefully I'll see you again in my next video.